It's been quite the week, right? It's been the, the, quite the, la the last two weeks uh, have been. If you're trying to follow along with the sermon series, uh, many of you know that you can go to gracelutheranpsl.com slash read, and you can actually see what all the readings are for each Sunday. Uh, all of our readings, everything that we have is for last week. This is last week's service, basically. And, uh, and so, so the service that was for this week is going away, and we're just going to kind of combine them with that last one that Ron is leaving because, because we had something going on, right? We had the great wind called Irma come and uh, attack us. And, and that's, I drove across the state four times. Like that, that's because, the, does, does everyone else's family freak out because they live down here in hurricanes? Like my mom called me like almost in tears, like you're going to perish if you stay down there, right? Like, you know, like that's just, like it's, go, it's going to go away. You need to get over to your grandparents' house on the West Coast. That's where you will be safe. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's... Like, like that's, it. did anyone, anyone hear that? Because I'd already like debunked, it's like, I don't want to get up into South Georgia and run out of gas and then just have to hang out in South Georgia. You know, like that's, that's not what I want to do, you know, to evacuate. Like, so, so the, the you know, oh, everyone's freaking out. So we went over to my grandparents and then, you know, it comes west and then we come back over on this side with the grandparents in tow now. And, uh, and, and we come over and then we had to bring them back. I'm telling you, Monday was an odd day to be driving around. Like, no gas. Nothing was open. Uh, Highway 60, we went down. They, they live in Sun City Center, if you guys know where that is. It's basically Tampa. And uh, we went down Highway 60 from Vero all the way over. Standing water on both sides of the road the whole way. Down 60. Craziness. Like, it's just like, whoa. Like, just the, it's, it's unreal, these storms. And we can look at the storm, and we think about, it's like, oh, man, like, is my insurance policy good? You know, like it's like you can really bring a lot of anxiety about us. Is my insurance policy good? You know, I think we have, we have this fear and anxiety. And, and, you know, just three weeks beforehand, Harvey hit Houston. And, and I was really impressed. Some of you probably saw it on Facebook, but my cell phone providers, uh, this, it's from Google, and it's called Project Phi, and they, and they offered for every line that I have on that plan, they were going to give me $20 credit. They kind of charge like a utility, so they charge for how much you do. Uh, Ed, can you turn down everything but my mic? I'm getting a buzz. I don't know what it is. It might be my mic. Oh, that's gone. All right, good, thanks. <laughs> the, um, but, but I... Uh, but I got this $20 credit, which I was impressed. And I had a friend who's in Houston, and he said, yeah, they did exactly the same thing for us, too. You know, they gave us this $20 credit per line, and we're talking about his house. And he goes, I don't know how I lucked out on my house, but in his neighborhood in Houston, he's on a bend in the neighborhood. So somehow more dirt got put on top of that. So the water went right up to his door frame that it didn't go in. But that's not what happened to the rest of his neighbors. You know, so they had water in their, in their homes. And he works for Exxon. And he, he's in Houston. Of course he works for Exxon, right? Like that's... But he, work, he works for Exxon. And, and he, he said the last two weeks, you know, when I talked to him, like my full-time job has been mucking out the homes of my colleagues and all of that under the water. And, you know, I think that was all in the back of our minds when we were thinking about Irma coming. And it's like, again, we go back to, I hope nothing happens because that hurricane deductible is rather large, right? Like that fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar deductible, like that's that that hurts a little when it hits, right? It's like it's like no, 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 no. This you know this this fence didn't fall because of the hurricane, <laughs> like. But that, you know, it, it hurts and it scares us. We have anxiety from it. But we also see, we see the best part, too. Like, it's amazing seeing all the good stories. Like, you had in Houston, you had, like, the Cajun Navy. Is that what they were calling them? You know, coming in, like, say, having all these, like, amazing stories of people driving boats down streets to save, save these people. And we're like, oh, that looks 
amazing. That's, that's, that's unbelievable. Seeing how humanity can come together, no matter what you think or believe or who you are, that people would pluck those out of the water and bring them to shelters, safety, and homes, right? And, and, and there's, there's a dichotomy there. So the big idea today is this, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. And in the, the, the Psalms, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So by raising of hands, who knows what the fear of the Lord means? <laughs> like, no, like, oh, some people, you're like, oh, yeah, we're getting, getting, on, uh, getting on top of there. This proverb here is super strange, right? It's super strange because it's one of those things like when you took that freshman philosophy class and that professor that you liked said something profound, and then you got back to the dorm and you're like, what did that mean again? Like, it, re- it was really speaking to me. I, think, I feel like that's what this is. Like, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, oh, okay. What does that mean? Like, so what does it mean to fear? Like, like, I had a recognizable fear. My family definitely had a recognizable fear of Irma coming in and just decimating everything, right? Like, there's a recognizable fear. Is that the same fear of the Lord? Like, that is, is that what's going on here? Is that what the beginning of wisdom is? And by the end of the sermon, I'm going to get to this point where the Cajun Navy doing their thing is more in line with the fear of the Lord than when we had fear of the storm. That the fear of the storm that was going to come in and destroy everything we have was fear of ourselves. But the Cajun Navy going around saving everybody is fear of the Lord. That's what we're getting to today. So Nehemiah. So we're in this situation. Coley read the story already that, that, that there's people that, all right, to set it up, you had the Babylonian captivity, right? So it, they, they come in and they take all of Israel out of Jerusalem and out of the whole land and they put them in captivity in Babylon. Persia comes in, takes over Babylon, and Persia is much more like lenient about about. Um, about people being in in their hometowns. So they allow people to go back to Jerusalem. And and Nehemiah goes down there, and he starts this building project. They start rebuilding the city, or start rebuilding the walls around the city of Jerusalem. Like, they start doing all these things, but he notices that there's a problem. And that a lot of these people that are in this this town are, they've, they've had hard times and also, there's a guy that's rebuilding the city that's wanting them to work, by the way. They're, they're, having, they're having hard times, and they've had to sell their land. They've had to mortgage their land to other people. So there's other Israelites that are exacting large sums of interest on, on these people and them selling their lands. And just as a little excerpt from the, from the actual reading from Nehemiah chapter 5, if we see how Nehemiah feels about this. He says, I was very angry when I heard their outcry in these words, and I took counsel with myself, and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials, and, and I said to them, you are exacting interest from each brother, and I held a great assembly against them. So we, we bow, And so we go down a little bit, and so I said, the thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not walk in the fear of our God? See that? The fear of the Lord. To prevent the tots of the nations and our enemies. So what's going on here? What, why is Nehemiah upset with people holding, hold, holding interest and, and you know, having mortgages and all those things? Why is he upset at them? It all centers around this year of Jubilee. Have you guys ever heard, heard of the year of Jubilee? Yeah, right? How many of you have heard it because of South Park? Be honest. <laughs> like that's people are like I don't know what you're talking about. Like that that's all right. So so the year of jubilee is this thing that's that's explained in in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 20 25. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 25, and we'll get to it right here. And it's it's this interesting interesting idea that that is it's happened. It's a uh, 
there's this idea of the fear of the Lord that we're talking about. In Leviticus, you know, God sets up rules so that people can, can fear him. Like that, that's such a, it's, it's a hilarious statement to say that. It, he sets up rules for, so people could fear his God. But it's, it's this fear, bec- what he's establishing is having fear of the Lord rather than fear of yourself. Because fear of yourself is, is when you are just concerned about numero uno, right? When you're just concerned about yourself, just concerned about your own well-being. Fear of yourself, and he's, and he's moving into having fear of the Lord, which, is, which says everything is God's. And he is redeeming, and he's holding it tightly. That everything is God's here. So the year of Jubilee, and this is bonkers what this has. So let's say if someone became poor for whatever reason, and they had to sell their land every 50 years, a year of Jubilee was called for, and people would, and their land would have to be returned back to them. What? That's weird, right? Like that, that's, and what it was, it was saying that you're, you fear the Lord, that God is constantly redeeming his land, that you, that you don't fear yourself, that you fear the Lord, and everything will be made right, no matter what the situation happened, right? So every 50 years, I think everything would be returned. So we can look at this. So the, in Leviticus 25, and you can look this up more later to see the context of it, but the land shall not be sold forever in per- perpetuity, for the land is mine, this is the Lord talking, for you are strangers and sojourners with me, and in, in all the country you possess, you shall allow a redemption of the land. So, if your brother becomes poor and sells pro- part of his property, all right, so this, this is kind of the beginning of this, and it's kind of a long statement, so we're not going to read all of it. But if your brother becomes poor and sells part of his property, skipping down, but if he does not have sufficient means to recover it, then what he sold shall remain in the hand of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. In Jubilee it shall be released and returned, and it shall be returned to his property. Now, there's all kinds of these, and this is... And this is kind of weird. So this year of Jubilee is something, and I think it's an important principle for us here, because it forces people to pause. It forces people to pause and kind of return, to pause and serve, to pause and fear the Lord, right? That's, that that's kind of what's going on here. Now, here, here's the problem, though is the exile. Not everyone leaves Babylon. Only some come, and they're like, well, what about this family? The Joneses are over here. They didn't come down. They're still up in Babylon. Who's going to watch over their land? And so people take more land, and they go over there, and then some people you know, have problems. Maybe they get sick, and they have to sell their land so that they can stay alive. And like, There's all kinds of this thing, and there's this guy named Nehemiah that's wanting this huge building project to be involved in everyone, and there's a famine going on. So even though we can't work the land as much as we should, now we're not producing enough food, and it just... It, it brings all this out and there's people that are being incredibly selfish and taking advantage of their own people and it breaks Nehemiah's heart. And he asks, do you no longer fear the Lord? Have you forgotten who you are? Have you forgotten who you are? You know, as I look around the world today, you know, even at people in the church, you know, we, this, this has been like a very interesting week. We had very strong fear of this hurricane, but we look around and neighbors doing amazing things for neighbors, we see all over the place. And we see people that, that have really pulled out, you know, they, they, they have done amazing things for their neighbors. But I worry is that we get a couple weeks away from the great winds and the great rains and, and we begin to fear ourselves rather than fear the Lord. You know, we, we become selfish again. I had a friend tell me this story and, uh, and a friend tell me this story that was from, uh, from a pastor's conference 
And we have conferences where we get together and we commiserate and talk and plan and things like that. And we were at a pastor's conference, and, and he told me that it was in his congregation, which was up in a, in, a, in a northern climate, it was the dead of winter, and it was super cold, and there was this family who had a toddler and a fresh newborn, and their furnace went out. All right? And the dad, this, this guy, he's calling all around. He's calling all around. And, and, and he calls the pastor, and he says, we, we don't have the money to get this furnace fixed. You know, and they're, they're trying to come up with something. It's like, can we, can, you know, can we borrow money from the church or something like that? And the pastor's like, okay, okay. So he, he gets the, the, the elders on a conference call for the church to see, we'll see what the church can do for this family. And, 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 the, and this pastor was flabbergasted because the, the first thing when he asked the elders, the first thing out of the mouth of at least one of them was, well, why don't they have a rainy day plan? Right? Why don't they have a rainy day plan? Yeah, some of you are like in the seats, like uncomfortable right now, right? Like, and, and that's, have we forgotten who we are? You know, ha, have we forgotten the fear of the Lord? You know, that's, have we gotten, have we, have we become so enamored with ourselves that we only fear ourselves and not fear the Lord? Like it's, when, when you start studying this fear of the Lord term, it becomes amazing. You end up finding Proverbs that talk about fear of the Lord. And Proverbs 14 says this, and we're not going to read this whole thing, but in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. And then it lists a bunch of things that are fountains of life and that you, you can turn away from the snare of death. So if we fast forward now to, to, uh, to, to get down to 31, it says, Whoever oppresses the poor man insults God, insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honors him. This fear of the Lord, like I, I kept looking it up all over the places, and one of the things that's foundational is how we treat one another, is the fear of the Lord. It's not fearing ourselves, right? It's not fearing me anymore. It's not just looking after me. It's taking care of others. Because it's all God's. Now, here's the thing. Here, here, here's, here's the thing. We, we, I think we all are kind of like, oh, my gosh, I'm guilty of this. I kind of want them to stop talking about it. Because it's, I'm uncomfortable with it, too. But here's the thing, is that we are like those Israelites that, we're, that we've had to sell and go into debt that something happened in our lives where we had this debt put upon us. Maybe it was something that we did. Maybe it was something that we got sick or something like in that. Or maybe something that our neighbor put upon us. But our, our sin is often called a debt. But it's like a debt that's been put upon us. And, and just like Nehemiah, and we're going to find this out in a little bit. Just like Nehemiah came, Jesus came and his death paid off that debt. Now, the good news of all of that is that your debt is paid off, but in Jesus' resurrection, he made you a son and daughter in his kingdom. He made you a prince and a princess in his kingdom where you don't have to worry about that debt anymore. He made you part of his kingdom coming. He repaired all of it. And that's amazing news because some of us, we worry so much. We look at hurricanes coming. We look at like divisive natures of things around us. We look at storms of hate and anger all around us and, and we just get scared and we're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive this. But God is saying, I am here 
and this is my land, and you are mine. And he always is redeeming it. So going back to the story of Nehemiah, Nehemiah gets upset at the guys and he ends up paying the huge tax that is from Persia on all these people. He ends up paying that so that they can be successful in their land and he makes it so that they they can all be taken care of, that they don't have to worry about that huge tax that, that that Palestine puts on top of them. They were, he, he takes that worry away from it, and our Lord takes that away from us. And so this sense of the fear of the Lord is that it's the same Lord that split the sea in two so His people could be saved from the warring Egyptians. The same Lord that always watched over His people as they did all manner of folly in their land, right? The same Lord who came as one of us to save us all is the same Lord that's with us even in the bread and the cup that we might not have to fear ourselves or our circumstances, but that He loves us all. And so we can, by, by, by living in that fear, we can spread the love of the Lord to everyone around us. Amen. Jesus, we thank you that you love us so much.